Greetings dear friends, I present your attention to most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Opel Astra G. The Astra G was once considered a near perfect corrosion resistant car. Until the age passed over a dozen years, the main problems with them were serious rot on the clapper board, the back door of hatchbacks and station wagons. They faced in a bright future and galvanizing work wonders, especially since the corrosion of this Astra is an imperceptible thing until the last moment. When Terry rust appears from under the plastic of the threshold, it's too late to bring Burjami. The threshold is gone and the spars are dying. It is easy to find cars in this state. It is enough to look at the copies of the first years of production with the price of up to hundreds of thousands and drive them onto a lift. For the cheapest, everything is usually visible right away in the photo in the ad. However, you can also find a lot of interesting things on the bottom of noticeably more expensive cars. The main thing here is not to be shy and wash out the layer of rubber and anti-corrosive a little. Sometimes there is simply no metal from the inside. Galvanizing keeps the outlet panels in excellent condition, but the initially weak anti-corrosion treatment kills these bodies securely and invisibly. It is not so expensive to eliminate such problems. Painting is not required, but the vast majority of body services are unable to comprehensively restore the body, and they do not want to. You will have to cook the car all the time. It is clear that such injustices should be avoided. The interior of the car was initially simple to primitivism, but comfortable and made of good materials. Let it be boring here and ergonomics do not reach the level of Volkswagen, but this is really quite an acceptable level even for a modern car. Unfortunately, most of the cars are offered with extremely poor trim levels. It's good if there are power windows and air condition conditioning. But the main thing is that it is comfortable here, the seats are good and if there is a repair salon. But finding such a version with buttons on the steering wheel, a good native CD radio and onboard computer for lights and other little things is not so easy. Climate control and standard navigation and CDR1500 with a color CID display are generally exotic, which is most cases as said by the owners themselves when ordering parts from abroad. Standard Xenon and CD Charger changer are even less common and usually on cars with exotic Astro motors, 2.2 by 147 horsepower or 2.0 turbo. Electrical problems are rare, but the door wiring is worth checking. The central locking is interrupted by the driver's door microwave switches and malfunctioning locking motors in the locks. The seat wiring on cars with side airbags will fail if the seat is pushed to the rearmost position for non-standard rear carpets or to the foremost position with non-standard front carpets. The steering loop becomes fragile with age and also fails. The electric mirror adjustment button may jam. And if all this electrics is not there, then there is nothing to break. The wiring in that car is quite simple and reliable, but the quality of the material sometimes fails and even in this age, problems begin with the ECU, ABS, EGUR units. Pillars are not very frequent, but you can say, as they say, hit. A rare but extremely unpleasant problem with passenger compartment wiring are the connectors of the transverse harness on the bottom and the junction of the front and rear parts of the wiring in the passenger compartment. When the carpet gets wet, the connectors corrode and glitches become regular. But this only happens with completely dead specimens. But problems with the ECU of engines 1.8 and 1.6 released after 2000s are quite common and are expensive to repair. This is due to the unsuccessful location of the unit in an area with large temperature fluctuations. Less often, the ABS block fails. There, too, the soldering of the connections in the block is disrupted. Engine sensor failures are usually much cheaper and easier to diagnose, but they also occur regularly. Problems can be solved. The ECU can be restored, replaced with a serviceable one, or even moved the unit to a colder place. Sometimes it is practice to replace it with a control unit from older series of engines without such a problem from X16, X16, XEL for example. The wiring in the engine compartment is generally weak. The installation of the wires in the harness often crumbles when trying to rewire it. If collective farming is noticed with the replacement of parts of the harness, then it is worth checking the quality of work and the coincidence of the color markings of at least the most important wires. Almost all old trims levels there is EGUR, a hybrid of the power steering with an electric pump. Over the years of production, the machines managed to change three types of pumping units. The first of them, the so-called TRW1, is as simple as possible, breaks down for purely mechanical reasons or because of the weakness of the generator and wiring. They put it from the beginning of the production of the model until the end of 1999. It doesn't differ in super reliability, but it is prone to failures and glitches. True, the car drives with it not vary. 
the newer TRW2 is much more common and was installed almost until the end of the European release of the model. This is already a computerized, computerized unit with a control system, sensors and other bells and whistles. In addition to purely mechanical and electrical problems, the sensors and the pump ECU itself are still mal malfunctioning, but errors can be read using the scanner. In general, the system is quite reliable, now it is failing due to age. It is necessary to very carefully monitor the power wiring, and sometimes the control system will require replacement. But unlikely the first generation of the system, TRW2 is not sensitive to the state of charge of the battery and the operation of the generator. It is successfully repaired. A typical age repair includes the replacement of two bearings of the electric motor, sometimes gluing the motor magnets and replacing the power keys of the drive. The braking system of cars with engines up to 1.6 liters is rather weak. The front brake discs are frankly small, and to replace them with discs of a larger diameter, you must at the same time transfer the hubs and brakes caliper to the version from cars with engines 1.8 and higher. You will also have to change the rims. The weaker versions have a bold pattern of 4 per 100 wheels, and the more powerful ones have 5 per 110 wheels. Additionally, the tubes, rod and malfunction of the ABS unit are likely, it may stop working altogether, turn off after warming up or give an error on one of the sensors or valves. In general, no surprises, but you need to watch out. The rear calipers are also prone to wedging, which not, do not like the heavy wear of the rear pads and discs. Change components on times, otherwise you will have to tackle expensive brake repairs. Well, listen well to the work of the vacuum amplifier. On all the cars, it is prone to leaks. The brakes on more powerful machines are not simply more efficient. There were no complaints about the quality of work and resource troubles are about the same. Suspensions on Astra J are very reliable. The resource of most components is over hundreds of thousands of kilometers. The suspension withstands all of the hardships of life in an exemplary manner and even constant operation on dead roads will only require an early replacement of shock absorbers and the support of the front strut will fail up to 150,000 kilometers. The price of the component doesn't bite either. The steering rack leaks very rarely, but a light tapping is difficult for it. Steering play is often related to the drive shafts and steering column connections, not the rack itself. Automatic transmissions are exemplary and reliable. These are the iSYN AW50, 40 and A series with engines of 2.0 and 2.2 liters and AW60, 41, SN on weaker engines. Problems arise only with high mileage or hard operation in combination with a rare oil change. The correct interval is 60-70,000 km for the AW50 and 50-60,000 for AW60. Also, junior boxes require regular repair of the gas turbine engine with the replacement of blocking linings. They use it much more often than powerful ones. A typical first call for these automatic transmissions is the disappearance of weakness of the reverse gear or strong jerks when shifting, but this usually happens with runs over 250-100,000 km. The most common series of engines on the Astro G is 1.4 and 1.6 liter 16 valve engines, as well as the 8 valve 1.6. Slightly less common are 1.8 motors. Cars with other engines are extremely rare, except that 2.0 is often found on the Astro Group. 16 valves 1.4, 1.6, and 1.8 are structurally completely identical. The versions released before 2000s do not have problems with the ECU, but the 1.6 piston group is prone to coking. And the resource of, of the quiet valves in the cylinder head and valve steam seals is too small. Already with runs over 150,000 km, the valve seals need to be changed regularly or the head should be repaired. But there are simple ignition units and high voltage wires very cheap. More recent Y and Z engines of the production series after 2000 2001 have a modified piston, which even on 1.6 engines is less prone to oil consumption, but an increased oil appetite at this age is already difficult for them due to their age. But in addition to the resource of the piston group, problems with ECU and throttle valve failures are added, which can be solved very expensively, but fortunately not everyone happens. If you do not change the candles, then a very expensive ignition module becomes consumable. The thermostat on motors is prone to skipping and underheating. If you regularly change the timing kit, avoid underheating, change the candles regularly, pour good oil, then the resource of the unit will be 250-350,000 km before serious oil consumption appears, which is quite normal by modern standards. Just remember, the mileage is usually 100 or 2000 km, most of the cars have motors in very average condition, and a thorough diagnostics is recommended when buying. 
Open owners are usually tight-fisted people and not always technically competent, so there are options for openly collective farm repairs. Motors of the 2.0 X20X EV series are even more reliable and more resourceful, have a simple throttle valve with a classic idle speed control, a simple ignition module and in general will be a good choice. But they were installed only until 99. The wiring of the engine compartment is frankly crumbling from old age and they are rare. The turbocharged 2.0 Z20 LET series in fact differ little from them, but of course you should not count on a large resource. Engines of 2.2 series Z22 SE are almost never found, but in any case they are not recommended for purchase. An expensive design with a timing chain, the replacement cost of which is comparable to the price of a car, the lack of oversized pistons, expensive attachments, a very weak cylinder head in which the spark plug threads often break and the timing bolts fall out. In short, there were more than enough arguments against buying. Diesel engines 2.0 are in low demand, but generally very successful. They have a good resource of the piston group, high reliability of the fuel equipment and its low price. In general, such a diesel engine can be safely taken if there is someone to service it, because usually the average service cannot solve even the problems of a simple injection pump with the electronic regulation. And as information about the problems of Opel Astra J is exhausted, if you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.